we should have this Scientists of the Solar System research project completed, at least all the information about all three scientists. Um, and then you may have this completed or not, it doesn't matter, but we're going to end up doing this today and turning this last page in. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. I'm going to add some commentary to maybe bring some of this information that you did research on, kind of bring it together, and also put it in a little bit of a historical context back in the day and maybe relate some of it to what's happening today. Remember, at the beginning of the year, we talked about Aristotle's view of the universe. This is Aristotle's view of the universe. The earth is at the center, water surrounding the earth, then air, then fire, then ether. This is, what was built, this is what people believed and what people were taught for over 1800 years. And it fit with what people saw in, when they woke up in the morning, as through the day, everything looked like moved around the earth. Also it was nice that the earth was the center of everything and humans were at the center of the universe. Everything revolved around us. So humans were at the center. Now, when people would go out at night, they look up in the sky and they see all these stars and planets and they'd be moving and they look up and see the stars and they look like they form different patterns. Remember, during this time, there, were, there wasn't Netflix or cell phones or any of those types of things or movie theaters. And people would look up in the sky and they would form stories about the images that they saw the stars form. So the nighttime sky was like their movies and their entertainment and, and also the political institutions and the social institutions at the time relied on the stars and the position of the planets for calendar information, when the plant crops, when to have specific religious ceremonies and so on. So the understanding the motion of the stars and the planets was very critical to people at the time. And if you knew how the planets moved and the location of the stars, you had very, very valuable information. So at the time, knowing the location of the stars is kind of analogous to like uh, the tech industry today. The location of the stars and the planets were the high tech industry of the time. And just like uh, Microsoft and Apple are very carefully, they very carefully guard their tech secrets so nobody else gets them. That's the same thing that was happening back during the 15 and 1600s. Three scientists at the time, Tycho Brahe, Galileo, and Johannes Kepler, who have you researched, all lived about the same time period in the 15, 1600s. And remember, knowing the locations of the stars was, was very, very important, and they guarded those secrets very carefully. Tycho Brahe had the best data available. The best data available. He had the best measuring instruments. He was very skilled mathematician and um, he was able to collect very, very minute detailed data of the motion of the planets and the stars. And everybody regarded Tycho Brahe as the high tech genius of the time. And people wanted to work for him and learn from him. And one of his students, Johannes Kepler, was also a very talented mathematician. And Galileo, and like I said, all these scientists knew each other and knew about what they were doing. And at the time period, there was a big discussion among the scientists, because as you started to collect the data, some of the data didn't fit the Earth-centered view of the solar system. And so scientists started to go into two different groups. There were scientists that believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system, called the geocentric view of the solar system, Earth-centered view. Other scientists started to realize, oh, maybe this wasn't true. They started to think, well, maybe this Earth was not the center of the solar system, that the Sun was the center of the solar system. So the heliocentric view is a Sun-centered view of the solar system. There are also two other terms called Copernican view and Ptolemaic view. The Copernican view is the same as the heliocentric. Sun-centered. 
the Ptolemaic view is the same as the Earth-centered view. So these terms are used interchangeably, heliocentric and Copernican view, and geocentric and Ptolemy, I'm oh, sorry, geocentric and Ptolemaic view. These two are the same and those two are the same. So as we go through this, I can all use those terms sometimes interchangeably. All right. Let's go back to our discussion about these three scientists. Now, also during this time that was happening in society was the Inquisition. The Inquisition was basically an institution in the church charged with the, with, with the eradication of heresy. Heresy is anything that someone said that was against the teachings of the church or against the political institutions of the time. And hundreds of people were put on trial by the Inquisition. Some were put in jail, some were uh, burned at the stake or guillotined. And so it was a very interesting time that these people, these three scientists, lived in. And so the church's belief was that the Earth was the center of the solar system. And if you would teach against that or said something against that, then it's possible that you could be brought up for heresy by the Inquisition. Now, Tycho Bray was very adamant that the Earth was the center of the solar system. He is a geocentrist. He believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system. And as time went on, I started collecting more and more data. People started to say, no, that can't be right. Galileo, for example, he improved on the telescope. And when he made this improvement of the telescope, he pointed his telescope to the sky and to the moon, and he saw craters on the moon. Now, at this time, people thought that the Earth and the heavens were two very distinct entities, that everything in the Earth was perfect and uh, had its own set of rules or processes that it followed. And the processes or the physics or the uh, science of the earth was different than in the heavens. The heavens was perfect, the earth was not. Well, Galileo pointed his telescope to the moon, he saw craters on the moon. Also, Galileo pointed his telescope to Jupiter and Saturn, and he saw rings around Saturn. Remember, this time, everything people thought that everything revolved around the Earth. And Galileo saw these rings around Saturn. He also saw the moons of Jupiter. Moons were orbiting Jupiter. They weren't orbiting the Earth. So based on the, the viewings of his telescope and other data that he saw, Galileo started to believe in the sun-centered universe, and he started to write about it. Galileo was a very, very famous scientist at the time, and he wrote about it, and he taught people about it. He wanted everybody to look through his telescope to see the moons of Jupiter and the rings of Saturn. And he started to promote the sun-centered view of the universe. Johannes Kepler was another one that wasn't sure whether it was Earth-centered or sun-centered, but remember, he was a student of Tycho Brahe. Now, Galileo started to publish information about the sun being the center of the universe, and he was put on trial by the Inquisition. And to make a long story short, the church put him on trial actually two different times. And Galileo kept saying, no, the sun is the center of the solar system. But he did not want to die or have his head cut off. He kind of enjoyed having his head attached to his body. So he would say, okay, I'm not going to teach this anymore. But at the end of the trials, he eventually said, and yet it moves. And which meaning doesn't matter what he says in the trial, doesn't matter what the church says, doesn't matter what he says, this move, the earth moves around the sun, doesn't matter what happens at this trial. But because he was still promoting the sun center view of the solar system, instead of putting him to death, the Inquisition uh, put Galileo in, under house arrest for the rest of his life. And there he lived out his days. He eventually went blind, but he still conducted as much scientific research as he could all the way during this uh, to, uh, uh, house arrest until the day he died. Let's go back to Johannes Kepler. Again, Johannes Kepler was Tycho Brahe's student. Now, at the time, this, the, the social custom of the time is uh, uh, if you go to um, a party put on by nobility, in which Tycho Brahe was actually part of the noble families of the time, and, of course, he would go to these social activities, these parties, and um, uh, he would dance and drink just like everybody else at the time would do. And the custom of the time is that you could not leave the, the party until the, the host of the party would leave the room. 
And so what happened was Tycho Bray, like any other human being, would have to had to go to the bathroom. But the theory is that because he waited so long to go to the bathroom that he got a urinary tract infection. And he never overcame this urinary tract urinary tract infection and eventually died. But the the story goes that because Tycho Bray had this data of all the stars and the planets of the solar system, everybody wanted his data, that on his deathbed, he had Johannes Kepler come and talk to him. And Johannes Kepler was one of his star students, probably his best student. And the story goes that on his deathbed, Tycho Bray said, Johannes, if you want my data, you have to promise me that you use my data to prove that the sun uh, or that the earth was the center of the solar system. And Johannes Kepler, wanting this data, promised Tycho Bray that he would use his data to prove that the earth was the center of the solar system. Tycho Bray died, Johannes Kepler got the data, and at that time he then waged his war on Mars, as what they said. And it's going to be very interesting to see what Johannes Kepler did with that data. And that's another story for another day. So that's kind of the social context of what all was happening during this time. So what I want you to do is on this document, I'm going to post just the last page of this document. And based on your research and this little narrative that I gave you, you want to determine which scientists contributed the most to our understanding of the solar system. And you must explain why you picked that scientist. You will say, the scientist that contributed the most to our understanding of the solar system is so-and-so. Put that scientist's picture right there, and then have an explanation in this rest of this area of why you picked that scientist. It must be at least a paragraph of information explaining why you picked that scientist and not the others. Okay. That's it.